Well, I think the, the first thing is to kind of really bone up on the, the, the truth and the facts behind, you know, what are these kind of health issues and to really not get into the, fall into the trap of thinking that uh, women's reproductive health is an illness in itself. These are perfectly healthy experiences for the vast majority of people. But then recognising when something is wrong and supporting that person to go and receive uh, usually professional medical help and to help them perhaps if they need to return to work after an operation or, or you know, sort of normal things you would do with any health issue. And I think really the main thing is this culture change is kind of recognising that humans aren't machines and um, it's perfectly natural to have changes in levels of energy or um, to have a menstrual cycle, it's perfectly normal human experience and it's not something that's gross, it's not something that shouldn't be talked about in the workplace or anywhere. Um, these are very old myths that you know, we continue to reproduce, but mainly just because we haven't been educated properly about it. It's, um, it's actually quite a weak taboo. As soon as you start talking about um, the realities women face, and, and in fact a lot of the interventions you can do in the workplace are not major changes. Uh, they're very small things that considerate actions that an employer can take uh, to make their workforce happier and healthier. I think what's driving it is two or three things. Um, in particular, female leadership. Um, females are reaching board level more and more. Uh, the issue of menopause causes concerns for those individuals and for their colleagues and people around them. They need support in understanding what their issues are. It could be maternity, it could be returning back to work post-maternity, it could be menopause. Um, menopause is a big issue for some ladies. It can really knock them sideways during their career. But understanding what they've got, why they've got it and how to deal with it is something that corporates ought to be offering support with. There's also infertility, so the spectrum's quite wide. Um, many people don't really understand how to address the infertility journey, what support should be provided. And there are some corporates that are even looking to help individuals with things like egg freezing, so that people have, can make choices around how they manage their career, around children, parenting, um, and obviously reaching the age of uh, menopause, which can be a real challenge. So corporates, I think, are really in need to sort of develop policies um, and identify solutions that help the corporate deliver those solutions to the employees and, and their partners. It's not just about the women, it's also about potentially their partners and how do they provide that support and guidance to those individuals. Sometimes it's about treatment, sometimes it's about information and how to support them on that journey. What was very interesting is that uh, a number of the companies at my table said they didn't have a women's health policy. But when we talked about uh, maternity leave and um, uh, carer leave, they do have those issues. So I think it's quite positive that they don't view those just as women's issues. And so it's adding on to that. The other point that was interesting is that many of the companies have dealt with and gotten behind the awareness of mental health issues and they see an overlap when you're talking about um, some of the research we've done is that using cognitive behavioral therapy can help women going through menopause. Or um, When you look at the emotional stress that some issues cause, it, we still have one in five pregnancies end in miscarriage and that affects both partners and they need support. Um, so it's interesting that some of the policies are there and some guidelines are there and the whole discussion will help, I think, organizations figure out what's right for them.